Hey guys, so recently a company reached out to me called EasyGuard and they basically manufacture and sell smart car alarm systems with passive keyless entry, start stop button and so on and so forth and basically they sent me down a simple start stop button for me to install in my car. This start stop button kit basically has the RFID tags, the transponder ring and the start stop button kit. He also sent me down the immobilizer bypass module which will help out you guys with the chip in the key so I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Um, basically this system costs around $33 on Amazon right now and it's very very affordable. So let me show you guys the system in action and then let's get on to the unboxing, tutorial and installation. So here's the box it comes with. Inside the box is the start stop button main unit, RFID tags, transponder ring, start stop button, immobilizer bypass module which is sold separately, brake signal wire, ignition wiring harness. I'm very pleased to see that they use copper wires here which helps with the reliability and longevity when compared to cheaper aluminum wires and an instruction manual. The main tools we need to get this system up and running are a multimeter, electrical tape, you can use heat shrink tubing and a heat gun instead of electrical tape, Phillips head screwdriver, wire strippers. You can use a pliers but a pair of wire strippers are the best tool for the job. Alright, so let's proceed to get to the ignition wiring harness by taking out some panels. In my car, we need to take out this one, held on by two screws and a few clips. And this one, I need to take out one, two, and one up in there. Then it just comes out like, and, and here's where the ignition harness is supposed to be. In my case, I don't have one because I have a start stop button installed from before. It's like directly opposite where ignition lock cylinder is, which is up here. These wires are really these wires. So you need to strip back the insulation of each wire in such a way that they are not touching each other when they are exposed.
on position or ignition position and test for voltage now we can see that the white wire has 12 volts now and as well as the accessory wires the yellow wire still has no voltage therefore we can assume that the yellow wire is the start wire but to make sure let's test it notice that i pierce through the yellow copper wires and pass the positive lead of the multimeter through like a needle on a thread this is to make it easy for me to show you guys that this is in fact the start wire whilst holding the camera there we go significant voltage spike when starting the engine so there's one last wire to check for and that's the brake signal wire notice when you press the foot brake pedal there's a switch connected to it Take your multimeter and test the wires connected to that switch and determine which one gets 12 volts when you press down the brake pedal. In my case, I need to test the green and red wires. The brake signal wire, the correct one from your brake pedal is the one that receives 12 volts when you press down the brake pedal. Now disconnect the negative cable of the car battery and let's move on to the next step. All right. So notice how I did this with my start wire, right? I made a hole. I want you to do this for all of the other wires. This is for testing purposes. So go ahead and do that and meet me back here when you're done. Now that you've made the holes in the wires, take the ignition wiring harness from the start stop button kit and strip back the wires with the wire strippers. I'll show you how to do it for one and you can do the same for the rest. So take the wire, put it inside the wire stripper and squeeze and BAM! But I want some more length, so I'll do this. There we go, beautiful. All right, so go ahead and do the same for the rest of the wires and meet me back here when you're done. Right, now let's connect the wires to the corresponding positions on the ignition lock cylinder, which we determined earlier. All right, so this is the main wiring harness from the start stop button kit. So yellow wire connected with starter wire, brown wire connects with the ignition two, red wire connects to the constant 12 volts, white wire connects to ignition one, blue wire connects to the accessory wire, and the black wire connects to the chassis ground. Now, if you have two ignition wires, you can connect either the brown or the white wires to either one of them. Just make sure that one is connected to one of your ignition wires and the other is connected to your other ignition wire. If you only have one ignition wire, then just connect the white wire to it. You don't have to connect the brown wire in this case. Now, notice how the system has one accessory wire. If your car has two accessory wires, then connect them together and join them to the blue accessory wire from the start stop button kit. If you have two 12 volt constant wires, then connect the red wire from the start stop kit to both of them. Okay, so remember the holes we created earlier? This is why. I went ahead and connected the one accessory wire from the start stop kit to my two accessory wires, just like a needle on a thread. Next, we have the ignition or on wires. I went ahead and twisted both of mine together and connected them to the single on wire from my car. Right, so we have the accessory wires connected, the on wires connected, and the 12 volt constant wires connected. So next up is the start wire. So let's join the start wires together. Last wire in this harness is the ground wire. Best practice is to use an existing factory bolt to connect to your ground wire. You'll more than likely find one in your driver's side kick panel. However, since we're just testing right now, I've gone ahead and just connected the ground wire up here. Go ahead and wrap some electrical tape around the exposed wires we created in the ignition wiring harness and let's move on to the brake signal wire. So let's connect the green wire to the foot brake signal wire. Once that is connected, put electrical tape on that connection as well. For the cars which have a chip in the key, you will need to purchase an immobilizer bypass module, which is also linked in the description. Also, you will need to have a duplicate key made. Take your original key and place it in the immobilizer bypass module black box below the induction coils like this. Close up the box, 
Then take the black loop and wrap it around the ignition lock cylinder about 3 or 4 times like this. And secure it with electrical tape or a zip tie. Then take the red wire from the 2 pin ground while running wires and connect it to your accessory wire and connect the black wire to a grounded part of your car. Now take your duplicate key and turn the ignition switch to the accessory position, cut off the head of the key and cover the ignition switch with something like a black piece of cardboard. Once done, everything else is just plug and play. Plug in everything, reconnect the negative car battery lead and let's test it out. Alright, so transpondering, beep beep, nice. Then you radio, AC, press it again, you have ignition on, nice. Alright, put on the brake. Button starts to flash. See? Alright, and let's start the engine. Take your foot off the brake. And try and shut down the engine. Put on the brake. Press the button. Off. It works. Alright, now that we've confirmed that everything is working, you can go ahead and cut off your loops that you've created earlier and make proper connections using soldering iron and solder or just twist them together and use electrical tape, it's up to you. Of course, you want to hide all of your mess and make it look all nice and factory installed. You can put the transponder ring in a place that is inconspicuous if you like. In terms of installing the start-stop button, you can bend back the tabs like this, then after deciding where you want to install the button, pass it through the hole and bend back the tabs like this. You can then secure it with hot glue if you like. And there we have it guys, how to install a simple start stop button in your car. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them below. If you're not subscribed already, then go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.